Hey guys, it's Ecomacy Tamara again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to do and continue the Oculus VR videos that I've been doing. I show you in the past how I can actually draw in VR. I show you different mechanics and features that I've been incorporating as I've been doing every single video. So what I want to do is I want to look into technologies that are going to allow me to communicate with multiple people at the same time. Meaning that if I have somebody else joining with their Oculus Quest, I want to be able to draw and see what they're drawing at the same time. So I don't want to limit this by the amount of users, but I might have two or three people that can join at once and we can change the settings depending on the requirements that I, that I come up with after I do a lot of experimentation. So, I'm going to be experimenting with a lot of technologies. We're going to start with something as simple as creating a TCP server today. And then we can see how that goes. And then after I do that, I'm going to do a TCP client. Then that client is going to be on a console application. And then lastly, we're going to create a TCP client that runs in Unity. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right, guys. So let me show you what we're going to be doing in this video, which is to start creating our TCP server. So. For the TCP server, I'm going to be using that net core. You are more than welcome to use, you know, any other technology, but this is the one that I that I recommend you use right now, especially after that net has been doing a lot of open source projects. So that net core actually works really well. So what I want you to do is basically go to that net.microsoft.com forward slash download and then download that net core, which is going to give you the CLI tools. Once you do that and download it and install it, I'm using a Mac, but if you're using Windows, you probably have the same, basically the same settings that I have. So once that's done, you're gonna have something like this. You're gonna be able to go through your terminal and then type in that net. And this is going to allow you to execute methods against the CLI. So when I say CLI, I'm talking about basically console, console tools. So this is gonna be a tool that is gonna allow you to interact with project creation, adding packages. It's basically a utility that that .NET Core provides to create projects and then, you know, and so on. There's just a lot of things that you can do with the CLI. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. So if you do .NET new, I'm going to show you what templates they offer by default. And let me make this bigger so you can see everything. So we're going to be focusing on creating a console application, which is going to act as the server. If you wanted to create a, a class library, you can do that as well. But so the way that it works, anything on the short name are things that we can create. And then the template description is going to be on the left. So for instance, if I want to create a console application, I would need to type in that net new space console. And then of course you can also specify the name. So there's some examples in here. If you want to create a new web API application, an MVC application, and then if you wanted to add authorization you can do that so I'm gonna keep it very simple I'm gonna start with a console application so what I'm gonna do if you're looking here I mean the YouTube I'm gonna create a new folder and this is going to be for our our client for unity or server for unity so I'm just gonna call this one unity TCP and this is actually not specific to unity you can use this for anything it's just gonna be a TCP server but because I'm I feel like we're more into the Unity side of things and going to call it Unity, but just keep in mind that it's going to be a plain TCP server that you can call from any, you know, any kind of technology that can communicate over TCP. So I'm just going to call it Unity and this is going to be, we're just going to call it a Unity TCP server and then we're also going to do a client. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a folder and in fact, let's call this Unity, let's see. Let me just call this Unity TCP, and then we can put the server and the and the client inside. Okay, so that's what's gonna be. Just thinking about naming conventions, just so that we don't get things all disorganized. And the reason for that is because I'm going to be checking this into GitHub, so I want you guys to follow along as you know as as, as easy as it can be. And okay, so I'm just gonna do that name new, and then we're gonna say console because that's what we want to create. And then if you do two two dashes name we're going to specify the name of the console application so i'm just going to call it unity tcp server so this is going to be the server that we want to create and it's going to try to create the project project was successfully created the the other tool that i use a lot is visual studio code 
And if you know me by now, you know that I love that tool. So I'm going to be using it here as well. So I'm just going to open it up. And then we're going to start with something as simple as, you know, having this is our project. This is our program. It just has like hello world because that's part of the template. And this is just saying this wants to be smart to an extension. I'm just going to say don't add it. And then here's our project, which, you know, it tells us that it's going to be an exe. It's going to be the output. And then net core app to that too, it's going to be the framework. So we got everything going, we have our, our program. So right now what I wanna do is I want to have the program launch the server. So we haven't created the server, we're gonna to have to do that, but I'm gonna start with saying, you know, when we launch the server, the server is gonna be launched from here. So we're gonna say, we're gonna say server is going to be launched from here. And then we're gonna have a message once we have the server going that is gonna say server server started and then we can just say you know three dots this is very common so we're not going to work in here just yet let's just keep that in mind because we need to do this and we can just in fact we can just say this is good practice on saying to do and then create server instance and start it so this is just good so that we know what we need to do okay so that's what we're going to have to do through main once we have the server going the, the next item that we're going to have to create, we're going to have to create a server. So to do that, I'm going to create a new class. And I've done this many times, so I'm not going to tell you that I know this in, by memory, but for the most part, I know the TCP server really well. So we can, I'm going to try to, to remember every little thing. If I don't, I'll have to look up some things, but for the most part, I think we should be okay. So this class is going to be responsible for listening for TCP clients. So that's why we're going to be doing a server. Is also going to be responsible for broadcasting messages to all the different servers. So, some of the things that we we do and we need to we need to also consider is that we're going to have to be store. I'm going to have to store the clients in a dictionary, and then that dictionary we can't really we have to be careful about touching the dictionary because what's going to happen is because this is going to be multi-threaded. If multiple threads are writing to the dictionary at the same time we're gonna have issues and it's not gonna work, it's gonna throw exceptions. So we have to do something called lock. And what that's gonna allow me to do is to, to basically successfully be able to write to the clients and then the threads are gonna be able to, you know, wait. If, if one of them is writing to it already, the other one is gonna wait until it releases its lock on that object. So let's go ahead and start. And I'm gonna start with creating basically the lock that I just mentioned. And this is common practice to in that net if you're doing multi-threaded application is going to do private object and this is going to be our lock and we're going to just do a new object perfect so the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to also have to type in the tcp listener so that's going to be our next instance we're going to make a read only and it's going to be a tcp listener and then i have a plugin that adds everything automatically for me just you, you saw that they're using a statement what's added if you don't have that already don't worry about it just click on it and it's just going to give you a little a little message saying that you need to add that using if you want to add the plugin that i'm using that it adds automatically the usings you can go and look it up which i have in here enable and yeah it's called auto using for c sharp and the creator is fudge so you basically start typing and if it doesn't find a, refer a reference to uh, library it's going to add it automatically for you so I thought it was pretty cool and, and I like it it saves me a lot of a lot of time okay so we have our TCP listener and we need to give it a variable which is gonna be server now the next thing that I want to do is I want to have an ID for each client that is connecting so I'm just gonna call it client count and we're only always gonna start the count at once so the first person that connects is gonna get the ID of one and then we're gonna be incrementing that as more clients connect so the next thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need to store the clients. And for that, I'm going to use a dictionary. And let me make sure that our using a statement gets added. If it doesn't get added, it's fine. We'll add it. I think this is the first time that I use out of using. So bear with me if it doesn't work. And then we're just going to do TCP client. So the first argument is going to be the ID, which is going to be the client count. And then the next argument is going to be our TCP client, the person that is actually connecting to us. To the server and then i'll just do a new dictionary and then that should get us going there just add a space here and looks up for dictionary it did not work so it's okay i'll just do using and that's why i'm testing that because i don't think it works all the time 
but it looks like it works for certain things. So, and then the next thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need our constructor. The constructor, it's going to be taking an IP address and that's gonna be the IP address that we're gonna be passing through the program where we create the server. So it's gonna say it's gonna be IP and this is gonna be the port. Awesome. So the next thing that I'm gonna to need to do is I'm going to have to create an actual IP because the TCP listener, that's the type that it takes. So I'm just gonna say IP address and looks at that work, it added system.net. And then this is gonna be our local address and then we can just say IP address because it's a static and then we can just parse it and it's gonna parse the IP address and then basically use the interface to get the IP address and store it in this local address variable. So the next thing that we're gonna need, we're gonna have to create an instance of the server that we have up here. And then for that, we're gonna do new TCP listener. And then this is gonna take the local address that we have created and then also the port, which is gonna be an integer. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually start the server. And then we have to create another, another method to basically start listening. So right now all we did is we're starting a server, but we're not listening for server connections just yet. And for that, I'm gonna create a new method and I'm just gonna call it start the listener. Listener, if I can type that right, there we go. And then the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a try and a catch, just in case we get any errors. I'm gonna catch, and then this is gonna be our socket exception, which I have in here, and then E. We can keep that simple. So if we have any exceptions with you know the, the server or the client trying to connect to us, we're gonna throw, we're gonna catch and throw an exception. So well, we're not gonna throw the exception, we're gonna, we're gonna catch the exception. So it's gonna say console, and then the reason why I wanna do console is because I want to. Let me go ahead and bring it in, and looks like it didn't. Let me just do this again. Console that. Oh, it's, it's saying include system, okay. And then, so I'm trying to get used to all the different commands that the VS Code provides. And then what I'll do, I'll just say so socket exception. And then we can use just a string inter interpolation in here to show our exception. And then I'll just do, the exception is gonna be E. And we can do, we can do that, perfect. And then of course, if we get an exception, we need to stop the server. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to start accepting connections. So, but we can't just accept one connection and then and then leave it at that. We need to start with a while loop because we want this to be constantly listening to connections. So I'm gonna do a simple while loop with a, with a true. So it's just gonna keep, you know, keep looping through and trying to see if there's a new connection. And then I'm just gonna do a right line waiting for client connections. It's gonna be the message that we display. And then we're gonna create a new TCP client. This is gonna be the new client. And the only time we're gonna get a new client is if the server accepted a new TCP connection. So to do that, we're gonna do server accept TCP client. Excellent. And then, so at this point we have a client, so we'll need to store that client in the dictionary that we created. So I could do something like clients, clients, and this actually needs to be plural. I just realized that because it's not one client, it's gonna be multiple clients, so it's gonna be a list. And then the list is gonna have to add a new client. So I told you that the ID of the client was gonna be the client count, and then we're gonna have to be passing in the new client. So I could do this and this could work with just you know one thread, but if we start adding more and more threads, those threads are gonna have to basically, you know, be able to safely write to the dictionary. So if we don't have a lock in here, this is gonna throw error. So we're gonna have to do a lock. And then this is gonna be the lock that I that I created on the top. And then this is how we safely are going to be adding adding clients to our dictionary. So the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna show, okay, I added a new client. So let's go ahead and add a new message for that. I'm gonna just say client client ID, and then we can specify this is gonna be the client count was, or we can say is connected and add it to our clients. It's just a friendly message so we know, we know what's happening. So, and then the next thing that I need to do is I need to handle the client connection. So to do that, I'm going to create a new thread. This is going to be 
this is going to be adding a new, if you notice on the very top, now we're adding system.threading and looks like our new utility is working and we can just call this one thread equal and then for this one we're going to create a new thread and then I'm going to have to add a method that is going to be handling this so let's go ahead and leave it at that for now and then I'll just say client count and then we're going to increment our client count so the other thing that I need to do is I need to add the method that the thread is going to be handling so that one is going to be the it's going to be public void handle client connection and we just say that it's going to handle the object that's the object that we're going to be passing in the object that we're going to be passing in is going to basically be the client id so the way that this is going to work is we're going to say okay we're going to start this thread so now that we have this let me go ahead and add it and i'll show you what we're doing so we are basically pointing a thread to this method but the thread hasn't executed yet so when we execute the thread we want to pass in the client id that we have created and the reason for that is because i want this object to get the client id so that we can look it up in the dictionary so this is going to be client count excellent and i think everything here looks fine so just as a summary before i keep going because i know there's a lot of things in here we're creating a, a lock so that we can handle writing to the client dictionary we also have a TCP listener, which is going to be our server. We have a client count, which is going to serve as the IDs for the clients. And then we have basically a dictionary, which is a map of IDs to clients. Then in our constructor, we're basically creating, getting the IP address that we're passing in. We are creating a new instance of the TCP listener, which is our server. And then we're starting our server. Then right after that, we need to call our listener because we're going to have to start listening for connections. So we're going to start our listener. We're going to do a try and a catch just in case something happens. We're going to do a while loop just so that we keep asking for to find out if there are any connections. We're going to try to accept. We're actually going to accept TCP client connections. And if we do get an, if we do get a new client, we're going to, we're going to safely add the client to the dictionary by applying a lock. And then if we add a new client, we're going to say, okay, the new client was added. Then we're going to have a new thread that is going to handle the client connection. So that client connection, it's going, to, it's going to get a client count. That client count is going to be passing to the handle client connection. And that's what we're going to be using to determine which client is connecting. OK, so the next thing it's going to be, we're going to need to get the client ID. And then to do that, I can just basically parse the object that we're passing in. So this is going to get us the ID. And I know that this is going to parse correctly. And I'm, I shouldn't say parse, this is going to be casting the object to an integer because I know that the, the client count is what's getting passed so I know that the integer is going to work so now what I need to do is I need to create a reference to the TCP client this is going to be our client and we, we can just start it with the word null and then I safely going to pull that client out of our dictionary by also using a lock remember that this is a multi-threaded application so that's why we need to do this and then we need to do client just so we need to get this client out and I'm going to get it from our dictionary. And then we're just going to pass in the client ID. So this is going to give us the client ID that it's going to be handled by this connection. So everything, everything is going so it's going well. We have our client. Now what we need to do is we need to broadcast information. So right now all we know is that we have a client. We're getting a client back. But we don't really know anything about you know talking to a client. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to basically do a while loop. And I'll show you what we're going to be doing in here. So in here, we're going to create a network stream. And it's going to be stream. And we're going to say client get stream. So this is going to get any kind of information that the client is sending to us. So we're going to get a stream of information from the client. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new byte array, which is going to be a buffer. And we're going to do a new byte. And normally, when you do this, you're going to start with 1024. Perfect. And then I'm going to also get the byte count. And there's a lot of things in here that I'm going to be honest that I've been learning. And I'm not a professional at this. But I know that this is going to work. So we're going to read from that buffer. And this is not bugger, by the way. This is buffer. <laughs> and we're going to start at 0. So we're reading the stream. We're starting at 0. And then we're going to go through the buffer length, which is going to be 1024. Awesome. Then we're going to say, OK, if we didn't get any 
you know, if the byte count, by count is zero, we're gonna, if the byte count is zero, we're gonna break out of the while loop. Okay, so we're just gonna say byte count equal equals zero, and then we're just gonna basically break. So, so, so far we have, basically we have a buffer that we are, we have the information on, and we're reading that information from, from the stream. So we need to pull that information out of the buffer and then actually make it useful by converting it to a string. So to do that, we're gonna say data, string, space data, and then we're gonna use encoding, and we're gonna use ASCII get string. We're gonna get the string from the buffer, starting at zero, and then go into our byte count. So what this is gonna be, is basically gonna be the information that the client is sending to us. And it's gonna be in readable form because we're converting that to a string. Okay, so then the next thing that I need to do, I want, I might want to broadcast the information that I'm getting from the, that I'm getting from the client. So the way that this is gonna work right now is the client is gonna be sending a message and then I'm basically telling every single client what message the client is sending to us. And this is not really specific to the experience that I'm trying to create, but it's giving me enough information about, you know, how clients can talk to the server, how the server needs to talk to the client. But I think as we build a server, as we build a client, we can look into how we adapt what we're building to the data structure that I need for my VR experience. Okay, so, so, so far so good, I have the data. And then I'm gonna need to send that data to the client. So I'm just gonna say send data to all clients. Clients. And then we can just say, you know, at this point, we we are sending some information to the clients. So we can have something like information. And we can just say client ID. And we can specify the client ID here because we have it in, you know, line 58. It's broadcasting or, yeah, we can say broadcasting. And then we can just say the data that this client is broadcasting. And then I need to close my curly brace here and also my semicolon at the end. So what's gonna happen is I need a method to send the data to all the clients. But at this point, we should be getting data from the client and then you know we just need to send that data over. Okay, so now that we have that information, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a new method to broadcast the information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new method. This one is gonna be public, static, void. And then we can just say broadcast. And then I can just say message. This is gonna be the data that we're going to be broadcasting. So I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna do a byte array and it's gonna be our buffer, encoding. The, the reason why I need to do this is because we're gonna be writing a stream. So I need to go the NID bugger again. <laughs> I need to go the other way around. I need to go and get the bytes and then write those bytes to a stream because that's how we communicate over TCP. So then I'm just gonna say ASCII and in this case, I'm gonna say get bytes, data, and then we can basically, I can just say message and we can just separate it by doing an environment, that new line so that the message that they get has a new line character at the end, awesome. And then remember that we need to write to the clients, but we need to safely, safely doing that. And we need to do our lock again. And then I'm just gonna do lock. Okay, and I'm just gonna say for each TCP client, and looks like this is trying to be smart and give me utilities, which I don't really need right now. So I'm just gonna do TCP client, and I say client, and in clients, the values. So this is gonna give me all the clients from the dictionary and we're just gonna say network stream. We're gonna get our stream out of this current client. Awesome, and then we're just gonna say stream. So we're basically gonna write to this client. We're gonna tell you know, client, this is the message that I want you to write or to receive. We're gonna say buffer zero, a buffer that link. And I keep hitting bugger because it's too close to the F. <laughs> okay, hopefully that makes you laugh a little bit. Okay, so let me make sure. Okay, so this is good. So we're gonna broadcast the message. We're gonna convert the message to bytes. We're gonna also give it a new line character. We're gonna safe, safely, basically, you know, use our log so that we can read the information from our dictionary. And then as we get each client, we're gonna write to the buffer so the client gets that information. 
Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna have to send that, me that message to the client. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say broadcast, and then we're gonna be passing in the data. So we're gonna get the, the data out of here from what one, one of the clients is sending to us, and then we're gonna send it to all the clients. So we're broadcasting to everybody. So it's more like, a, like doing a chat where you send one message and everybody sees it. This is exactly the same pattern. All right, so everything else, everything else is, is good in here. So if we're not getting more information from the client, what I'm, what we're doing here, we're breaking, we're disconnecting. So I need to safe, safely disconnect that client. So I'm just gonna do our lock again, and then lock. And then I'm just gonna say clients, remove, and I'm gonna get that client out of our list, our dictionary. And then I also need to shut down the client. So I'm just gonna say client, and then client, and then we can just say shut down. And we can just call this socket shut down, and we're gonna say buff. So there's options in here. You can say, you know, shut down the receiver, shut down the server. I'm gonna shut down buff. And then I'm just gonna say client that close. So this is how we can shut down gracefully, and we can also remove that client from, from the dictionary. So that's basically everything that we need to do in order to accept messages from multiple clients and also have multiple clients be able to connect to the server. So the next thing that I need to do, so right now this doesn't really give us much other than we have a class that can handle TCP clients, but we haven't really created a server. And to do that, I'm gonna go back to our main method. And in here I had a couple, couple of methods, a couple of comments, that, things that we needed to do. So we're gonna have to create a new thread. So I'm gonna say, okay, thread. And this is gonna be the server thread. And I'm just gonna say new thread. And then I'm just gonna use an action here by using a Lambda. And then I'm gonna say, okay, you know, on this new thread, I want to create a new server. And then this new server, we can just do the loopback address, which is gonna be the 127.0.0.1, or you can just basically put the local IP address. Or if you had a server address, you can also do that. And then we can just basically come up with a port. It doesn't really matter what we use. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use a large port. We can just do like thirteen thousand, and then basically close our with our semicolon. Okay, so we have a new thread, and then that's that thread is going to create a new server, and then what we're gonna do here is I'm going to start that new thread. So I'm just gonna say server thread. I'm going to say start, and at this point, this this is basically everything that it would take that it takes to create a server. Of course, it doesn't really give us much much we can't really test it right now because i haven't created a client but what i can do is i can make sure that this is going to be running so i'm going to go into my view and then let's go ahead and pull the terminal and this is one of the things that i love about visual studio code is that i can have a terminal i can have the code i can have just so many things the debugger like so many things open at the same time so i'm going to go into my Ut unity tcp server and then we can look and see what we have in here in the here so we have everything that we need. We have the project. So if you want to run the server, you can just do .NET run. You can also do a .NET build just to make sure that we don't have any build errors. And we can probably just do that first. And then the build succeeded. We don't have any errors. So we can just do .NET run, which is basically going to start the server if everything works. And then it's just saying waiting for connection. So what I'm going to be doing is I think I'm going to wrap it up here because I made this a long video. And in the next video, we're going to continue this and actually create a TCP client as a console application. So that's going to be video two. And then on video three, we're going to create the TCP client using Unity. And we're going to be adding a dispatcher to be able to send mes messages to Unity so that the main thread notes about things that are happening with the server and the client. So thank you very much, guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any comments about what I just showed you, please let me know. And also be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Petro.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.